I am from the Digital Harbor Foundation. So the maker movement and the hacker mindset in education has done great things to empower youth to move from a consumer-based culture in education where knowledge is ingested to a participatory experience where they have a hands-on uh, or a hand in their learning and experiences. This is done through solving real problems, exploring technology and tinkering through meaningful, through meaningful acts that help them to really have a stake in the problems that they are solving and the skills that they learn. Now, this is taking the form of exploring systems, hacking systems, coming up with novel ideas and novel solutions and insights, tinkering with technology and seeing it as something that should be explored and shared with others for insight. But where I see that this start to have the greatest effect is for changing things from a bigger perspective on a big picture, and it's done that very well. But in my own personal experience, where it begins to break down is on a more individual or personal level, where there is a relationship between the teacher and the student, because the ego can become involved. We are talking about embracing this exploratory nature and encouraging youth to come up with novel solutions. But what happens if those novel solutions and truths don't match our own perceptions of what truth is? This is where the ego can provide some resistance, and we can end up unintentionally stifling a youth and their insights. In my own personal experience, I had to overcome this in my pathway as an educator. And I did so by looking to one of my personal heroes, who is Bruce Lee, and his development in Jeet Kune Do. Now, even if we look at the symbol here, it's very much similar to an iterative design process where there is an interplay between opposites and a cycle of innovation. And in many ways, he was a hacker of the traditional kung fu system. He sought to disrupt it because it was very much focused on a exalted series of masters who possess the knowledge and the skill, but it was not participatory. It focused very much on obedience, where you have to go through a set series of rules in order to be able to, to gain insight. And he saw a problem with this ego-driven system and authority. He saw that it stifled progress. It was not focused on innovation. It wasn't focused on particip participation. So instead, he sought to disrupt this. He wanted to encourage his followers to be like water. Because water is formless. It's shapeless. It can take on the form of any container that it comes across. And for him, this was a very powerful metaphor. And it's actually become part of our, our lexicon. We talk about fluid processes as, as being part of a dynamic experience. And in co-learning, there should be a similar uh, fluidity between a teacher and a learner. In one, it's a, in one instance, I'm a teacher working with the youth, but then also they can be a teacher and I can be the student. And Lee saw this as a way to move towards an iteration and expansion, focusing on freeing followers from set mindsets or from set patterns. And I see this as a way to move and empower youth on an individual level because I look at it as we may have one, we start with one expert in a room, but then we can create nodes of experts among our youth in our programs. And through that, they become experts who can share knowledge and skills with us. And the sum is much bigger than the parts with that. And this can help to further erode any power structures that remain on an individual level. We can empower youth more deeply on that personal level by validating their skills and experiences. And in my own personal pathway, I started off as a well-meaning after-school educator who worked as a brain trainer and a one-on-one -on -one tutor. I worked with many youth who were having trouble in traditional educational systems to unlock their potential, but I focused very much on the tips and tricks that I taught were the correct way, and that was not focusing on innovation. When I started at the Digital Harbor Foundation, I needed to learn a lot of skills very quickly, and I was working with youth who were excellent and amazing, and their own knowledge and skills exceeded my own. And I could have reacted and stifled that, but instead I decided to establish and elevate them as experts. And it was a way of crowdsourcing their individual skills so that I can learn, but also to absorb their insights into a system as a whole, so that everybody's experiences increase. And it's not a zero-sum system where me giving them knowledge and confidence and helping them gain that, it doesn't limit my own. Instead, we all gain as a whole and everybody becomes more empowered as a group and our confidence increases. Now, this was a difficult change because it pushes us outside of a comfort zone. We have to be comfortable not being the expert in the room at all times. 
And because of that, it's a difficult transition to make, but the payoff is worth it because it really prepares and validates their skill on a meaningful level. To step beyond co-learning, we're empowering youth experts on an individual level so that they develop the confidence and knowledge to truly embark on a path of becoming future innovators and creators, especially in the tech sector.